Our final guest has gained international recognition as an author, professor, and speaker. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Dr. Tariq Ramadan. I have one more announcement. Um, after Maghrib, inshallah, please go to the bazaar to booth 507. Uh, Dr. Ramadan will be signing books. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala shafa al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, you heard lots of uh, advices and, and lots of things were said and I think it's important to uh, listen to what was said, starting with what uh, Imam Suhaib Webb was saying, and then Imam Siraj Wahaj, uh, Dr. Altaf Hussein, and, and uh, um, also Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. Uh, when it comes to you at uh, MSA and, and starting by uh, thinking about who you are and what you want to be, and as I heard Dr. Altaf asking you to support the Organization, I think that with this long history, it's very important uh, that we help MSA and that we support what is done in uh, this uh, uh, society here in the United States. Let me just uh, end with a few thoughts because I was told there is not so much time uh, before Maghrib and, and uh, we have to, uh, to end. I have been here over the last uh, two days and listening to talks and listening to uh, advisors and listening to uh, what is our role as Muslims. And year after year, we come back with the essential and if uh, the ISNA convention has a meaning for us, it's really to come to, to, uh, it's to help us to remind to remember the essential and to remind our brothers and sisters of the essential in Islam. And dealing with our society and dealing with our religion, if we start with our understanding, I want to tell you something and to share something which I think we need to understand our role facing the challenges of our time. And the first challenge of our time is you know, to look at what is happening today in the Muslim majority countries and this very optimistic take that we find in the Arab world and among Muslims saying there is something which is happening towards more freedom and more dignity in societies that were dealing with uh, dictatorship. And if you think about what is happening in, in the countries, you come and you realize something which it's important when it comes to liberation, liberating the countries and liberating ourselves. But at the end of the day, when it comes to the most important challenges of our time now, when it comes to what we can hope for the societies and what we can hope for ourselves, is to be very, very cautious not to reduce our religion into something that could be instrumentalized in one way or in another, saying Islam is this, Islam is that, and using Islam as a reference without understanding the essence of our religion. And if I can advise the students here that this is what I can see, and we kept on repeating this, be careful not to confuse the goals with the ends when it comes to our understanding of our faith. And the very essence of our faith here is really what was meant when it comes to a taqwa, when it comes to this very deep God consciousness. And while you are stud studying in the West, when you are dealing with your society here, 
remember that one of the main challenges that you have is to come back to this deep understanding of Islam and to be committed. And to remember that at the beginning of the revelation, when the Prophet ﷺ got the revelation and started to spread the revelation to the companions, it was in fact a conversion of the heart and with the conversion of the heart, a conversion of the understanding of the world. You live in a society where we are facing challenges and as Muslims, you know, the perception of Islam is quite negative. It's important to enter into something that I call today an intellectual jihad. Intellectual resistance to lies and people who are saying things about our religion and even us not knowing our religion and not responding in the right way. But the first is really this one. Be careful in this society, you, because you are on the defensive, to confuse between the means and the ends, and to, to keep on trying to be acknowledged by the people as good Muslims, as good citizens, forgetting what it means first for you to be a good person, a dignified person. And there is something here which is the starting point of everything. When Allah SWT called the Prophet ﷺ and he started by telling him the very essence of things, he told him about, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ This very beginning is read, meaning there is a message that you have to read and you have to understand. It's a new way to look at the world. It's a new way to look at yourself. It's a new way to look at the hierarchy. It's the new way to look at the people around you, your parents, your friends, and more importantly, the poor people. In fact, the conversion is the first enemy and potential enemy that you have in this world is yourself. The first person that you have to question as to his or her intention is yourself. So calling to a tawheed meant from the very beginning, be careful with everything which has to do with the shirk al-khafi, which is associating to Allah secondary things that you are attracted by. Of course, it's power. Of course, it's money. Of course, is the world and your status in the world. And if you are in this society in the United States, be careful. Even within academia for the students, you be attracted by knowledge, by titles, by being called so and so. And remember, one day you will come alone. Without title, with nothing but your deeds, what you have done, who you are, and the essence of your life. Be careful, there are traps and danger in this purification process. And the starting point of our religion is to understand the meaning of La ilaha illallah. You keep on repeating. You keep on repeating Ayat al-Qursi and Ayat al-Qursi is protecting you from anything which is bad. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum meaning I start with Allah and he is the one who is not going to die I'm going to die and my understanding is that he knows everything alimu al wa shahada he knows what I I am showing and he knows what I'm hiding but the point is this one be in this society agents of this meaning of life by starting with yourself struggling against your ego, struggling against people taking the means for the ends. And there is one starting point. Remember in Sulat al-Fajr. And this is something which has to do with the conversion. You look at the world in a new way, in a new contemplative way. That the, the world is sending you messages as to the meaning of your life. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim. The ayat, the signs of the God's presence, are in the horizons and in yourself. And there is a sign. And the sign is tell me, tell me today in your life as American, 
as the country which is perceived as the richest country in the world where you have so many things and you read the Quran and the starting point of the conversion when Allah SWT is calling the Prophet and telling all the Muslims, all the people who are listening كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاضون على طعام المسكين meaning be careful the test of your faith is the way you are with the poor people is the way you are with the excluded people in this society tell me how much you think about the poor I will know how much you think about Allah this is the conversion of your heart this is where as Americans you should be the conscience of this country as students, not by being as good as them intellectually, but reminding them of the essential things of life. If you are the first and spreading around dictatorship to protect your democracy, so your democracy is nothing as for the dignity of human being. This is where, as Muslims, you have to be the voice for the voiceless of this country, but not only in political terms, in dignified terms. Every human being, and please, not only the Muslims. Don't look at where are the Muslims for me to protect karamat al-insan. No, the problem is, and the point in the Quran is, All the human beings are dignified and we have to be in our societies if you want to be an added value in this society let the people feel it not by always talking about islam and protecting the rules of islam but starting with the very essence if i believe in allah if i understood allah la ilaha huwa al hayyul qayyum i understand this i should be close to the human dignity and the human dignity is in the United States of America to be able to say this. And it means, if you are serious about this, to start with yourself, the purification of the ego, the, the, the starting point of our revelation was very much that. Was very much starting by liberating your ego, helping the poor people. Many, many people in the Sufi tradition, in the mystical tradition, they wanted to follow a sheikh. And they wanted to follow a sheikh and the sheikh were to tell them, you want to follow me? You want me to be your mentor? Now you go for two years serving the poor people. Just deal with your nafs and I, I will deal with your education. But you start with yourself. So ask yourself in which way in taskiyat in nafs to master this dimension, the relationship. Even your money, even your kids. You can look at, you know, uh, uh, Soheb Wed was talking about the Yama parents. It's very, it's a trap sometimes. If you are obsessed with your kids and you don't understand that I'm educating you to be independent, you don't belong to me. We all belong to him. And I am educating you to be able to be a human being without me. And in the day of judgment, I want you to pray for me. Why aren't we in this society people coming with the true relationship with our parents? You know, as be careful about this. It's a serious matter here. If you have your mother, if you have your father, if you have a family in the United States of America, this is the very meaning of spiritual presence. It's not to sit down and to say, you know what, we pray five times a day. But what is the meaning of praying five times a day if you forget Rahma, Silat al Rahim, the relationship with your father, if he is alive or if he is dead, the relationship with your mother, the relationship with your kids. Be this presence, be able in universities to speak about this, to speak about one of the most important challenges in industrialized society is elder people, is the way we deal with, with people who, who are now perceived as not useful for economic reasons. How come can we deal with this if you are not being this presence and we need to have students being able to talk about this? Karamat al-insan, the poor people, the eldest people in this society. Remind the people around you of the essential principles of life. If I don't care about the old people, if I don't care about the poor people, what is the meaning of my faith? What should I be in this society? What is my contribution? 
So this is where we start by talking about ourselves. It's the spiritual. This is spirituality. Spirituality is not only to be isolated from the world, but to remind the world of the essential dimension by starting with Tazkiyat in Nafs. You know, when you have the, the Prophet ﷺ saying, This Quran was revealed with sadness and pushing us to think about this sadness. It's, uh, this story of life is going to end in a very bad way. You are going to suffer and you are going to cry. We are going to cry. Even if you are now getting married, one day you are going to cry. One day you are going to lose your father, your mother, your kids. One day you are going to, to lose your husband. You are going to lose your wife. This is life. What is the meaning? Where are you in the process? Are you worshipping knowledge and just you want title? No, it's not possible. Anyway. Just, this is something which I think it's important in the way we have to deal with, uh, with the, our presence here. And the last point that I wanted to make, which is following in all this, which has to do with the way we deal with our spirituality and our presence. I kept on repeating, and I really think that MSC should be, a, 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 and not only all of us here, please, for the sake of our community, for the sake of our, our consistency with our values. There are three fields where we have to work from our spiritual dimension, what I'm talking, and Karam Nabani Adam, we have to understand. Three fields that are important. The first is, is a serious matter. And I keep on repeating this every year I come. Please, brothers and sisters, you need to launch a jihad against racism within our community and within this society. It's a jihad against racism. It's a jihad against anything which has to do with differentiating. No, no, it's, it's serious here. It's in within your family, with your parents, with your kids. The way you deal with the African-American, with the Latinos, with even the converts. Why do you think Soheb Webb is keep, keep on repeating the fact that he is a convert because there is a serious problem with the way Muslims are looking at the convert as second-class Muslims. We have this obsession. Sometimes when the convert is a sheikh, he's the best. So we idealize him. And if he's an ordinary Muslim, he's the worst because he's still too much an American to be a good Muslim. This is not, this is not fair. You know, we had one Muslim, after two weeks of being a Muslim, because he was a great philosopher in his previous life, the Muslims were asking him fatawa. Two weeks after he became a Muslim. Because we like fame. We don't respect taqwa. You have anonymous Muslims that are much better than me who was born a Muslim. Can you just imagine what is the rahmatullah on someone that he's giving him this faith after he was born in a non-Muslim family? For us, it's great. So we have to act against racism in all these dimensions. The second thing, and it's serious also in our campuses, please be serious about the role of our sisters in the coming years, about justice and equality within our community. All the studies, all the figures are showing today that the driving force of the Muslim organizations are much more sisters than brothers. So now we have to stop being very apologetic, resisting and responding to the non-Muslims by saying we don't have a problem with women. We have to be serious. And my advice to my sisters, please stop the victim mentality, stand up, find the brothers who are on the same understanding, with the same understanding, and now this is the time where we have to work together. It's not women against men, it's us together in the name of Islam. And this is a challenge. The last thing that I wanted to tell you, because today there was something about Syria, please, in the United States of America, what Soheb was saying, and what this was repeated by Hamza Yusuf, and also by uh, the, about all the speakers, in fact, is be for the others. And be for the others is not, do not please forget your brothers and sisters, 
that are suffering around the world for political reasons tortured in this country. In this country. You have people who are in jail, they don't know why they are in jail today. It's only because their name, or they are African American, or Latinos, or their name is Muhammad or Abdullah, they are in jail, we don't know why. If you are not courageous enough to be vocal and to stand up in the name of the dignity of this country as American and as Muslims and as people of principles, I think you are not doing the right thing. So it means about what is happening, the domestic policy, but also about the international policy. Please never give up on international justice, on the dignity of the people in Africa, in Palestine, in Syria. Please don't be shy, don't be absent. What the American society needs is people with wisdom, with commitment, who are talking and speaking the truth. So this is from acting against your ego to acting for the justice and acting for justice for others. This is what I hope could come from MSC. Be, please, humble with Allah, courageous with human beings, inshallah. Wallahu a'lam. وأعلى وأحكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Again, please visit booth 507 where Dr. Ramadan will be signing books. Um, for Dr. Ramadan and the rest of the scholars, can we just get one beautiful resounding takbir right now? Thank you all for attending. Thank you to all of our speakers. Thank you to all of our volunteers. Thank you for supporting the oldest Muslim organization in America. If for whatever reason you are unable to give tonight, you may donate by visiting our website at msanational.org. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.